The beginning. After his fiancée broke off the wedding, Ed leads Scallon and immigrated to North America. Ed found work at a logging camp in California where he learned techniques on how to move large, heavy objects. After coming down with tuberculosis, he moved to Florida. After staying with newfound friends, he recovered from his illness. After recovering, he purchased his first acre of land. This is where his amazing story begins. The most amazing thing he said in his publication was he knew what electricity was. No one in history has ever made this claim, not even Tesla. We're going to investigate his experiments and his conclusions and find out why he made this claim. We will be starting our investigation with his publication, Magnetic Current. The first thing we did was purchase a book written by him called Magnetic Current. And the first thing we noticed was the picture on the cover of the copy we purchased was a picture of an atom. The book was published by Health Research in Pomeroy, Washington. We checked the book contents and it matched other copies of his work, but the cover art bothered us. The reason for this was we already knew Ed didn't agree with the way the atom was drawn. So we searched for the original cover art and discovered that the original cover was different. For some reason, all reprints did not use the original cover art. Through experimentation, we later found out what the original cover art meant, which is very important, and more on that later. This image is a conception of a monopole magnetic field, the north side of a magnet. The first paragraph of the book talked about the writing being lined up, so if you looked east, all his descriptions for magnetic current would be the same as electric current. What I believe he was indicating was magnetic current and electricity are the same, and they are related to the poles of the Earth. He believed magnetic current was coming from the Earth's magnetic field, not from the material the magnet was made up from. You'll see why I've come to this conclusion as you go further into his writings. Next, he goes on to say that his book is his conclusions of two years of experiments at Rock Gate, and it gives the latitude and longitude of this location. The reason he gives the duration of time's research is to indicate that he observed his experiments over a long period, because he believed the magnetic field came from the Earth, and he determined the length of the north side of a magnet is shorter at his location. He gave his coordinates of where he was located. You'll see why I've come to this conclusion as you go further into his writing. He then describes what a magnet is. A bar, a horseshoe, a sphere, and magnets with no end. They all have a north and a south pole. What he means is all magnets have both poles and the magnet with no end is a toroidal magnet. He talks about sphere magnets and states the poles in a sphere magnet can be shifted or removed and the substance that circulates in the metal is the real magnet. Each particle is an individual magnet by itself with its own north and south pole. They are so small that they pass through everything, and they pass through metal easier than air. They are in constant motion, running one kind of magnet against the other kind, and if guided in the right channels, they possess perpetual power. The north and south pole magnets are the cosmic force. They hold together this earth and everything in it. Each north and south pole magnet are equal in strength but the strength of each individual magnet doesn't amount to anything. To be of practical use, they'll have to be in great numbers. What he's saying is the magnetic particles are infinitely small monopole magnets that run together to form a small magnet. Their constant motion is what gives substances their magnetic behavior. And if guided in the correct geometry, they give perpetual power. 
These magnetic particles hold together the Earth, Moon, all planets, and the stars, as well as everything on Earth. Each particle is of equal strength, but must be in great numbers to amount to anything. Each North Pole magnet is being expelled by the North Pole side of the magnet, then attracted to the opposite pole through the air, travel through the metal and or magnet, then is expelled again in an endless circle, the inverse occurring for the South Pole of the magnet. What it is saying is the North Pole side of a magnet expels North Pole particles through exp repulsion while simultaneously attracting South Pole particles. And the South Pole does the opposite. It attracts North Pole particles and it expels South Pole particles. All of the magnetic particles when they are expelled are not attracted to the opposite pole of the magnet, but instead get dispersed into the environment as well as new magnetic particles from the environment taking their place. What he is saying is some of the particles as they are expelled do not return to the opposite pole of the magnet, but other magnetic particles replace the lost particles from the actual environment in a constant exchange of magnetic matter. The Earth itself is a big magnet. Its magnetic particles act similar to a permanent magnet's behavior. In a permanent magnet, there is a neutral line that occurs at the pole transition that neither attracts nor repels. What Ed is saying is that he's discovered a neutral line that separates the poles of a magnet. A line within a magnet that neither attracts nor repels, and there's no magnetic force. Ed makes some bold, controversial claims. We will try to confirm his claims through experimentation to prove. He's basically describing his version of a magnetic atom, which starts out as an infinitely small particle with the same behavioral pattern going all the way up to the Earth's size and beyond. To summarize, one, he said he knew what electricity was. Two, he was basically indicating electricity has a magnetic base as well as the Earth and the solar system. Three, he states that all, magnet that all magnets on the Earth are made from the Earth's magnetic field, not the substance that they're made of. Four, he describes perpetual power. 5. He describes monopoles. 6. He indicates magnetic particles are the smallest particles. 7. He describes his magnetic atom, which has a north, a south, and a neutral line. Mainstream science contradicts all of Ed's conclusions. We want to try and take his writing and explain it to beginners, what Ed was talking about. This is our interpretation. The experiments will begin in episode 2.
This is an example of an outside pole transition zone where adjoining matter would be locked to the next particle of matter when matter is being built up. This also occurs at the nucleus of Lietzschalman's magnetic atom model. Notice the attraction and repulsion going on simultaneously in geometric patterns. More on this later.